here to brief on the Maldives today. Um, I'm, you should have just received a press release uh, by the High Commissioner on the situation in the Maldives. Um, and here with me I've got Mona Rishmawi. Um, many of you know her already. She's the Chief of our Rule of Law, Equality and Non-Discrimination Branch at OHCHR. Um, and she has made several visits to the Maldives. She knows the situation very, very well, uh, which is why she's here today to take some questions and to update you on the situation. I'll just briefly read out the, the High Commissioner's press release, which is also in the back of the room. Uh, the High Commissioner today has appealed to the government of the Maldives to refrain from carrying out planned executions and to uphold the de facto moratorium that has been in place in the country since 1954. The High Commissioner says that the Maldives has long provided important leadership on global efforts to bring an end to the use of the death penalty. So it is deeply regrettable that a series of steps have now been taken to resume executions in the country. Since last November, there have been a number of worrying developments on the issue of capital punishment in the Maldives. The High Court on the 30th of November ruled that the President may no longer exercise the power for the offense of intentional murder if all the heirs of the victim demand the death penalty. And in June this year, capital punishment regulations were further amended to allow for hanging in addition to lethal executions as a method of execution. The death penalty is not effective in deterring crime, the High Commissioner stresses. Revenge must never be confused with justice, and the death penalty only serves to compound injustice. A judiciary that is unable to consistently apply fair trial standards and is marred by politicization must not be allowed to have the final say in matters of life and death. There are currently 17 people on death row in the Maldives, including some whose cases raise serious due process concerns. As you know, the UN opposes the use of the death penalty in all circumstances, and in countries that retain the death penalty, international human rights law requires that those sentenced to death have the right to seek amnesty, pardon, or commutation of their sentences. I'm going to pass the floor to Mona to give you a, a further update on something that's, that's occurring as we speak in the Maldives, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Ravina. Also, I mean, the death penalty issue is really very serious because the moratorium has been there since 54, since 1954, and all previous presidents actually commuted death sentences, although the, uh, the punishment has been on in, in the books, what happened since 2014, that they strengthened basically the possibilities for uh, passing on death sentences. In son and since November, all organs of the state have been now involved, the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive in the issue of death penalty. So uh, we are extremely worried. But as we are speaking, uh, another law was just issued today just now, this minute. It's a law about uh, defamation, which basically uh, will, uh, it's a defamation law that will particularly target uh, journalists and human rights defenders. It will, uh, it proposes a fine up to $135, uh, 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 135,000, I think, dollars, and a jail sentence from three to six months for the failure to pay that fine. So basically, it's crippling freedom of expression. It's uh, 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 and, uh, uh, including uh, uh, religion uh, on the basis of uh, defamation of religion, national security, and social norms. Very, very, very wide law, uh, uh, which was opposed uh, already when it was introduced in March. I was there in May and we discussed it already and we basically were very worried about it. Our understanding is that there are now protests this minute in uh, Maldives, in Mali, about this particular law uh, where human rights defenders and journalists are taking to the street to protest the passing of the law. Uh, happy to take any questions about any of these, uh, uh, these two matters.